Jesus is in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, well, it's such an honor for me to be here. We've had a wonderful time, and uh, the Lord has so ministered to me in this place and uh, brought some things to mind. You know, sometimes by the Holy Ghost, you need to be reminded <clears throat> of things the Lord has spoken to you previously that you may have um, laid down or haven't thought about. And the Holy Ghost is wonderful to uh, remind you of those things. And so not only does he minister to us new things, but he reminds us of things uh, that he wants to do. And that has certainly been so for me this weekend. Also, I am so connected with your pastors and then uh, Susan and Kevin, who uh, we've been connected to for a lot of years. We won't say how many, but, you know. <laughs> And so it's just been a great honor to be with you, and I, I thank you so much for allowing me to come, and we would love to do this every year. Amen? Hallelujah. One of the things I've loved about this conference is that we prayed. Sometimes with a prayer conference, people love, you know, to be taught. And uh, I remember years ago, uh, one time I had taught, a, a, I don't know, it was a class or something, I was coming down the hall, and I was kind of proud of myself that I taught, you know, and everything. And I, I'm saying to the Lord how great it was uh, to be amongst the prayers and to teach them. And he said to me, yeah, that was really great, but when are you going to do it? When are you going to pray? When are you going to do it? And I, so I love prayer conferences where we actually do it. And so we, we've had good times of prayer here, and we so appreciate your supply and what you gave to this weekend. So you may be seated right now. Um, we're going to, of course, go to the Word. How many of you have your Bible? How many of you have? Let's just shake our Bible right like this this morning. Hallelujah. Just remind the devil he's already defeated here in your life, in your family. All those that are associated with you in this city, in this state, and in this region. The devil is a defeated foe. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let's go over in our Bibles this morning to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Father, we thank you for words from heaven. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost, you move amongst us. Speak things to our heart, new and fresh. Speak things to us that we need to know. Grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Open our eyes to see, Father. Flood our hearts with light so that we can know and understand the purpose for the last days of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord, for words from heaven. Grant utterance by the Holy Ghost. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We're going to, uh, I told you, huh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, this, of course, is speaking of uh, the last days. And we'll begin reading at verse 1 from the Amplified Bible. That means my Bible is a little bit when your Bible finishes and runs out of space, mine keeps going a little bit longer. So I'm uh, chapter 2 of Second Thessalonians, verse 1. But relative to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and our gathering together to meet him, we beg you, brethren, verse 3, let no one deceive or beguile you in any way. For that day will come. What day? The day of the coming of the Lord. How many of you know it's very soon that Jesus is coming? The day of the Lord. Uh, for that day will not come except the apostasy comes first. Unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians has come. And the man of lawlessness, that is the Antichrist, the man of sin is revealed who is the son 
of gloom, who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and instantly against and over all that is called God or that is worshipped, taking his seat in the temple. That would be not this temple that he's in us, but the temple in Jerusalem. And we know that this is going to happen in the tribulation period. The Antichrist, he will be revealed, and he's going to take. The temple will be built. We don't know if it's the Messianic temple, but we know it is a temple, and it will be built. He's taking his seat there and proclaiming that he himself is God. Do you not recollect that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Jesus has been saying this for a long time. Paul here preaching is saying, I told you this. Jesus told you this. Jesus told you that he's coming. So we believe him, don't we? Now watch this. And now you know what is restraining him. Restraining who? The Antichrist. From being revealed at this time. It is so that he may be manifested at an appointed time. He's not going to be revealed now. He cannot be revealed now, but he will be revealed during the time of the tribulation. Um, And now you know what is restraining him. What is actually keeping him from coming so that everybody sees him now? What is that? Notice, now we know what is restraining him from being revealed at this time. It is so that he may be manifested at his appointed time for the mystery of lawlessness. That hidden principle of rebellion is already at work in the world, but it is also restrained only until he who restrained is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed, and the Lord Jesus will slay him with with the breath of his mouth and bring to him to an end by his appearing at his coming. And so we can see that this is speaking of a time. We're speaking of the end of an age, which we are very, very close to that. How do we know that? How do we know that? If you go over and read, we don't have time today, Matthew 24 and Luke 21, God gives us signs. He gave us signs of the first coming of Jesus when he was going to be born. He gave us signs there that we knew that he was coming in his first coming. In the second coming, he gives us signs there, wars, rumors of wars. We, We won't talk about all of that. But he gives us signs of his coming. And the closer it gets... Uh, the more those signs will be prevalent and they will arise so that the whole world will know this is a sign that Jesus is coming. All right? So here, and speaking of this time, the end of an age, we know at the appearing of the Antichrist, at his appearing, the church will be gone in the rapture. But the writing uh, here, the writer is saying here that the Antichrist, even at this time, was at work in the earth. So we know he has been at work. Now, notice this. There was a word up here called restraining. There is only one, one thing, one person who can stop the Antichrist. There is only one to restrain him and to keep him at bay, to keep him from operating, to keep him from coming online now. And that would be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that is going to keep him from operating in the world. Now, here in this scripture, we kind of saw uh, two uh, negatives together. We see the word apostasy, and uh, we saw that from verse 3, and it talked about apostasy and that there shall be a falling away. And, oh, my word, I've heard this preached so many ways. But this is the way that I understand it. If you look in the word at the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and the light, in the light of who the church is to be before Jesus comes, remember, she is to go out of here in power and glory. She is called to look exactly like Jesus, made in the image of Jesus. She is to, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ 
is to display him in power. She is to display him in might. She is to display him in glory. In fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it calls us living epistles. What does that mean? That means if the world didn't have a Bible, they didn't even have a Bible. They didn't have a Bible to read. They would look at you and they would read him. That is how much we are to be like Jesus before uh, the coming of the Lord. So we are to display him in, in power and glory. Well, the apostasy then that is coming is going to be so strong and so the church is going to be so strong and so mighty. Those people that say, I'm a Christian, and they are not manifesting him, there would be a separation. You would see those people that just go to church on Christmas and Easter and they say, well, I'm a Christian. Well, that's not what this church is going to look like. That's the apostle, apostasy. That would be a great falling away because you could not just identify with this body that is going to rise in the earth and be the glory of God manifest. Not everybody will look like that. They might have said they were, but that's what it means by the great apostasy. And I love to read uh, over in Hebrews. Uh, turn uh, forward in your Bible over to Hebrews. And I love to read this because this reminds me of the church, even though this is called um, the Faith Hall of Fame. And we can look here, and this to me is Christianity defined. This is how she is supposed to live. This is how the people of God are identified. Notice them at the end here uh, of Hebrews chapter 11, verse uh, 33. Here, here's us. This is the way we will, people will identify the real church. Who by the faith subdued kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promise blessings, Clothed the mouth of lions, extinguished the power of raging fire, escaped, escaped the devouring of the sword out of frailty and weakness, won strength and became stalwart, even mighty, resistless in battle, routing alien forces. Wow. This is the way we're supposed to look. So we know uh, that the people of God, they are to be identified this way. Now, sure, the people of God, they're going to have the wealth of God and the fortune, and we know all about the benevolence of God. Uh, we'll have the conveniences and the privilege of, of, of being in Christ, but we will have his purpose. And this right here is his purpose, that we would subdue kingdoms, that we would minister justice, that we would stop the forces of darkness. We would stop alien forces from working in the earth. They would, we would be relentless and we would be irresistible to the world. So then we see then how, who is going to restrain the devil. Is God going to restrain the devil? No. The people of God are going to restrain the devil. They're going to say, you stop Satan in the name of Jesus. This, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, is the one force, the one force in the earth that can stop the powers of darkness. The power of light stops the power of darkness. So in this scripture right here, it's really, it is plain to see that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, she is a separated and a different nation. You know the Bible says that. Calls the church of the Lord Jesus. Calls us a nation. A nation of people. We used to sing this little song. Y'all would know it. Most of you. You weren't even born then. We are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A what? A holy nation. And so God takes the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and he separates her. Remember, he sees three groups of people. When God looks down in the earth, he sees three people groups. He sees the Jews. Remember, he separated them, chose them out in Exodus, the 19th chapter. Then he sees all the nations of the world. 
then out of the Jews and out of the nation comes another nation called the church. And we are consecrated and we are set apart for him, for the work of God, particularly in the last days. I, I've always thought of this, especially in the light of this. This tells me that real Christianity is really, really radical. It's not a Christianity that just blends in with everything and kind of uh, makes your life be better, makes you just look good and makes you feel good. No, it's, it's a Christianity. It's, it's pretty violent the way that you see it in the, in, in the Word of God. What is real Christianity? Real Christianity means that you give up your life to take on his life. I, I, I love the Apostle Paul because that's exactly what he did. It says about him, he actually attained to this. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But then he said, it's not I that lives, but it's the Christ that lives within me. So all of our nature, all of that old nature uh, that has been dropped off through the blood of Jesus, suddenly at the end, we are going to be this giant marquee of the world displayed before the world. And that would be we're going to display him to, to the world. And that's what Paul said. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It is the Christ. He actually attained to that. It's what a marvelous thing. Well, we know Jesus' life too. Talking about Jesus' life, he was totally, his life was totally synchronized with the Father. Totally synchronized with the Father. I believe in these last days, the church will be the strongest force on earth, way stronger than nuclear. She is to be God-breathed. She is to be God-speaking through her. She is to be supernatural in every way. Amen? Some of y'all are looking at me like, wow. Yeah, it's actually the truth. And the only power, according to the word of God, that is strong enough to stop darkness, stop darkness in our nation, stop darkness in our region, stop darkness in your state. The only, the only power is residing in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So um, let's go over to Ephesians and, uh, 1 and read about ourselves here. Read about the church in Ephesians chapter 1. And Paul here is praying in Ephesians chapter 1. And he's praying about the church. And he's praying uh, that we would know and understand that God would grant a revelation to our heart. Revelation is different than information. Revelation is something that sticks to you. Information, you know, we, we get a lot of information from a lot of places. Revelation sticks to you. And you actually live off of revelation. And God can, by this we see, he can flood our hearts with light. The light of the revelation. And the first here, the, he says a lot of things here. But the first thing he said is, the first thing you need a revelation of is the power that Jesus was raised from the dead with. He called it here in this verse, um, in verse uh, 20, he called that exceeding great power, the power that he raised Jesus with. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying, I want you to know that the same power that he raised Jesus with is the power that you have in your life. That exact same power that he raised Jesus with. All right. 
And then we know, he said, he seated Jesus at his own right hand in heavenly places. He seated him there at his own right hand in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He seated him on the throne. And the Bible says in Philippians that he gave him a name that is above every other name in heaven and in earth. That name is the name of Jesus. It is above every name. I don't care what principalities, what powers, what's out there. The name of Jesus is above every single name. And so we see, see Jesus. He is seated on this throne. God raised him up there to this throne position. That throne represents authority. Authority, authority, authority. And then if we went over to Ephesians chapter 2, here we see uh, in verse, uh, I believe it's uh, chapter 2, wait, wrong chapter, um, verse 10, and said in verse 6, and then with us he raised us up together and made us sit down together right next to him on that throne. So what does that say to me? I have, because I'm seated at his own right hand. Oh, I wish I could go into all that, but I can't. Re right hand in heavenly places. What does that speak of me? I have authority, authority, authority. God has given it to me. Now, um, and then what are we to do with that authority? Chapter 3 of Ephesians. The purpose of uh, that authority in verse 10 is that through the church, the many-sided wisdom of God, in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects, may now be known to the angelic rulers, to authorities, principalities, and powers in the heavenly sphere. That would be part of your purpose, that by you, through you, the principalities and powers that would try and take positions in places, you would defeat those. You would speak to those and say, you're not moving here. You're not coming here. We're not having you here. And it would show those powers and principalities. They are defeated and they cannot move. You see, this is the problem with the church. They know that by the blood of Jesus, that Satan was defeated. He is defeated. He's already been defeated by Jesus on the cross. He was totally, every principality, every power was defeated by Jesus. But you see, just like a police officer, you know, there, there are laws there are things uh, with, within a government system. And in that government system, uh, you have to obey those laws. Those laws are there. But suppose there were no police to enforce those laws. You see that? You, you, you say you're driving your car and the policeman is there. What does he do? He puts his hand out and he says, stop. What is he doing? He is enforcing that law. That is what the church is sent to do. Enforce Satan's already defeat by Jesus. We are the policemen that say, stop. All right. So, now let's go over to Exodus uh, here, the 17th chapter. And this is very interesting. This is a story about the children of Israel. And it, this is kind of a type and a shadow that we can look at. And we can actually take a lot of direction and instruction from this. Exodus, the 17th chapter, uh, verse 9. And we see the children of Israel, they had enemies uh, coming against them on every side. And so Moses calls out to Joshua, verse 9, choose out men to go fight with Amalek tomorrow. And I will stand upon the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said. 
and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron went up on the hilltop. Now, this is what is happening here. Moses goes up on this hill, and he has a rod in his hand, which is a symbol of his authority. So then he sends Joshua down in the valley. He's on the hill. Joshua down in the valley and uh, to go and fight with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron are on the hilltop. Now this is what has happened. Moses goes up on the hilltop. He's got his rod, which is a symbol of authority. He commissions Joshua to go down and fight the Amalek. Read verse 11. When Moses held his hand up, Israel prevailed. When Moses lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they grew weary, so that the other men took a stone, and they put it up under him, and he, he sat on it. And Aaron and Ur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua mowed down and disabled Amalek and his people with the sword. Now, this is actually what is happening here down in the valley with Joshua. Joshua, it depended completely on what's happening up on the hilltop. Moses didn't go on top of the hilltop to run and hide from the enemy uh, because he was afraid or something. In fact, we see that Moses is the key to this victory by being up here on the top of this mountain with the rod, the symbol of authority in his hand. This is just an outside picture. It's like an illustration of us using our authority. So you see, Moses, he owns his rod. Not, not because of any kind of like a natural condition, but because of a spiritually granted place by God. A spiritually granted place. His authority then is proven by the victory that happens down there in, in the valley uh, with Joshua. Notice. When Moses lifted the rod, the Israelites prevailed. When Moses laid down the rod, the enemy began to encroach. The enemy began to move. Authority in this position, God prevails, we prevail. Authority laid down, the enemy starts to advance. And so this is exactly what happens. Did Moses, was he ever without authority? No. Not one time do we ever see him without authority. If you're not using, though, your authority, it's the same as if you didn't have it. You can even know you have it. You can even acknowledge it. But if you do not lift it, if you do not use your authority against the enemy, when we use our authority, the enemy begins to retreat. When we shut our mouth and we don't use our authority, or when we open our mouth and begin to use our authority, the, it, the, the, we begin, the enemy is defeated. There has never been a time when the church didn't have authority. There's never been a time. Nations of the world, I, I, I was thinking about North Korea. You know why there is such advancement of demons and darkness in that nation? Because there may be Christians, but what? They don't know their authority. They don't know their authority. Uh, the devil locked up the whole nation so nobody can really get in there to preach authority. They don't know to use it. So then by, by them not knowing it, they have it. But if you don't use it, it's the same almost as not having it at all. Amen? Okay, so let's transfer this over to us right here in this place. Or any nation where you are. So God sets you in an eternal position. Wherever you are, here you are in your house, 
you're occupying this place. And if you open your mouth and you use your authority, demons cannot work in your neighborhood. I think it would be great. This morning I was praying out my window and uh, where we were staying, there was a neighborhood ac right across me. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be great if there was like three Christians living in this? Maybe there was, I don't know. But if, if they didn't know their authority or they didn't use their authority, it would make a bit of difference. But if they knew their authority and they used it every day, I just think about that neighborhood. I think there should be signs that say crime stoppers live here. Surveillance, observation is at work. Wouldn't that just be the coolest thing to have a, a whole city like that? Where, where, where Christians that knew their authority, they didn't just know their authority, they actually used their authority against demons. That would be just great. Okay, so let's just transfer this to your neighborhood, where you're living. You're living here in Van Buren or wherever. We have people from a lot of different places. You're living there. Why are you there? Why are you living there? One of the reasons is this right here. You are put in a position there in that neighborhood to keep demon powers from operating. If you do not want gangs in your neighborhood, if you don't want thieves in your neighborhood, people coming in the neighborhood, backing up with some truck and, and, and stealing, killing people in the neighborhood, if, if you don't want that in your neighborhood, what are you going to do? You are going to not only have authority, but you're going to lift your rod. And every single day, you're going to do that. Now, I'll show you what happens. There was never a time that Adam did not have authority. In the garden, didn't he have authority? But if you don't use your authority, what happens? It creates, uh, we might say, a vacuum or an open space. Any open space where there is, any open space, what happens is, or vacuum, enemies try to come in and take take and make advancement and one of the ways that demons have gotten in America and other nations of the world is that maybe the Christians did know their authority maybe God had a strategy for them but one of the ways is that people will sit in front of the television and entertain us with the devil's advancing we're sitting there watching it, you know, saying, oh, look what the devil's doing. Pass the Kleenex. Crying about it. You know, but what's happening, I see this all everywhere I go. I see this. Suddenly, Christians, they're getting it. Not only are they getting it, they're actually doing it. They're getting up in their seat in the heavenly realm every single day and they are opening their mouth and using their authority. There should never be a school shooting in this city or in this region. Why? Hey, I'm here. I remember uh, when uh, all this news came out and they said, um, that there was going to be uh, terrorist attacks at the Mall of America in Minnesota. You know what that made me do? Squint my eyes and lock my jaw. They'll be in my city. They will not. You, the Somalians live there. But I'm telling you, no weapon that is formed will prosper where I'm living. It will not. Why? Because I'm going to use my authority and say, you're not coming here. So what did I do when I heard that? Well, it was the first thing I did. Oh, I didn't like cow and go, oh, I'm never going to the mall. Yep, you know what I did? I got Heather and I the day we heard it. That morning, we were not scheduled to go to the Mall of America. But that day, I'm going. So what do I do? I go on myself a prayer walk. 
I bind you, Satan. You will never come to this mall in the name of Jesus. And then what I do? I find out people in my congregation, and I send them out by twos every day to the mall of America. They, they do. They walk in the mall in the name of Jesus. I bind you every plot, every conspiracy of the devil will not happen. It will come to nothing here. This mall is blessed. It is prosperous in every way. What am I doing? I'm not only acknowledging the authority that God has granted me and given me, but I am using it. So, I said, my daughter-in-law called me one time. She said, you know what? There's a mosque going up down the street for me. I'm like, well, you live there, right? Down the street? You, you watch the mosque go up? Well, whose fault is that the mosque is going up? Just ask yourself right now. You have a mosque in your neighborhood. You have a, a crime trying to creep in where people are coming into your neighborhood. Whose fault is that? You better get up in your seat. You better get your seat in the heavenlies and you better raise your authority and say, devils, no more. You get back, you're not perching in my neighborhood. You're not sending people in here. I'm telling you what, you'll be drawing yourself a bloodline around there. And I'm telling you, nothing crosses the blood of Jesus. And so, this is what we do. It would be so great if you could just position people. Just wouldn't that be the greatest strategy? Hey, maybe God's already done it. We might have people in this room that are in every place to just use their authority. We might have them every neighborhood in this room. Maybe God already did that. You felt led to move to that neighborhood. Well, he didn't put you there just for nothing. He put you there to use your authority. And not just use your authority, but pray over your neighbors. Pray over the building of the city. Pray that your city will prosper. That's what you're there for. To show the principalities and the powers, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God. And so, this is what I do. I'm telling you, this election, Christians better get up. Because we're all going to stand before God one day, and the Lord's going to say, Hi, what did you do about America? Well, let's see. I watch TV a lot, and I, I cried a lot, and I got mad a lot. I stomped my foot. But did you use your authority? Let's go to Matthew 18. I'm just close to there. Look at the Bible. This is called, this prayer is called the prayer of binding and loosing. Now, look, look here what it says. It says, verse 18, Truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on the earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. Does it say whatever God forbids and declare? No, you. You, whatever you forbid. I forbid you, Satan, to come in this region. I forbid you to come to this city. You are not setting up any of your stuff here. And we know all about his stuff. We probably know more about his stuff than we do God's stuff. You have to open your mouth. And so this is what I do every single day. I, I love, um, Sister Billy Brim taught me this. And I, I learned it too from this book called The Authority of the Believer by John, uh, by John Macmillan. And he talks about this in, in the book. And he, this is what he does. This is what I, I do every day. This is what you are called to do. We talked all about purpose this week and strategy. This is a great one right here. So simple. Doesn't take much time. We talk about uh, 
We talked about how you can come to Jesus at the time and come to the Father. At the time you come to the Father, what's the first thing you can do right here? Now, this is what he says. Do we believe that God hath quickened us together with Christ and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ? If we do, our reaction to that will be a fervent, Lord, I accept your gracious word. I believe that thou hast thus wrought for me. In humble faith, I do now take my seat in heavenly places in Christ at the right hand. Teach me, O oh God, every day how to fulfill this glorious ministry, how to exercise the authority which you wrought in Christ and you have entrusted me with. Everybody, put your hand right here and say, me. You have entrusted me with. Teach me how to fulfill this ministry. Train me day by day that I may attain to the full statue of the perfect man in Christ so that in me thy purpose of the ages will be fulfilled. And so then what you do, this is what I do. I used to just read that, but I pretty well know it by heart now. So I read Ephesians. I read that chapter about uh, grant unto me the spirit of wisdom and rev revelation. Thank you, Lord, that you're flooding me with light. You're showing me more and more of what I'm called to do and how to fulfill this gracious ministry. Then I turn myself to the devil. And I start with myself. This is what you do. How, how often do you do this? Every day, every day, every day, every day. Consistent pattern, habit. You make it a habit every single day. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I am committed to my call. And right now, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I bind you. I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over myself. I plead the blood over my spirit, my soul, and my body. Then I go to my family. I name each one of them. Almost every day I name all of them. I, I name all their names. I say I plead the blood of Jesus over Jim, over John, over Lucy. Then I go down the I plead the blood. I bind you, Satan, and I take authority over. You will not. You will not move. You will not show yourself. I take authority over everything that you would try to do. This is what you do every day. This is taking your seat. All right, then you go from your family. You go to your church family. And you say, I bind you, Satan. You will never come to this beyond church in the name of Jesus. Devil, you take your hands off the finances of this church in the name of Jesus Christ. And I plead the blood. I plead the blood over my pastor. I plead the blood over his children, his family. I plead the blood over my church family. You have no authority to work here. Then you go from there to your city. Devil, you take your hands off of my city. You're not having my city. My city will serve God. The hand of God is upon this city. The glory of God is coming to this city. You have no place here, Satan. I bind and take authority over you. Your maneuvers and your plans, they come to nothing here in Jesus' name. Then you go to your state. You draw a bloodline around your state. Then you move over to this region. I tell you, if, think of every, if every church just here in this area had Christians like this. And they became actually responsible. Because we, we, we are. We are responsible. Who else is responsible if we're not? And if you don't take your responsibility, hey, you can't be complaining. And where we can be is, well, they just got in here, I'm telling you. All that, ho that homosexuality and all those, that stuff got in my nature. Well, why? Because the church, we have to do 
our job. Amen? Over our, our school. I mean, I, a Tifa, uh, what was her name? Uh, Rachel, Tifa Tiller, years ago taught us this about our school. She said, I'm telling you, Columbine should have never, ever happened. Our colleges, our universities should have never happened. Just if you have, say you drive carpool. Normally, you drop them at the door, and there's a path you follow around the school, all the way around the school. Then you come back and go out. That's the way it is our school. Just open your mouth while you're driving right there. Devil, I bind you. You'll never come to this school. You won't come here with drugs. You won't come here with addiction. You won't come here with murder. In the name of Jesus, every evil spirit, we drive you out of this school you will never you're not welcome here and I plead the blood of Jesus over every child I plead the blood over their families in the name of Jesus our school will serve God we become here responsible you see we we kind of have gotten I, I like to see uh, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the light of this that we're, we're not just a sheepfold and these are our sweet pastors and he's pastoring the little sheep. But actually, this is an army. And this is the commander of armies. And armies look different than sheep. One minute, you can be a sheep. Next minute, you can be in the army using your weapons. Amen? So, I'm going to ask a question this morning. How many of you can commit to using your authority? And you're going to have to listen to this message over and over. But you know what happened? This message will start seeping into your heart. Start seeping in. And you will find yourself taking authority over things. It'll be major. Now, remember I talked about the notebook for those that you were here. Write down those things that you take authority over because you'll find it, it almost becomes a routine for you. But every now and then in your spirit, you'll veer off and, 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 and something will come to you. Write that down. Amen? This is a spiritually granted place. I would love to see this church. Uh -huh. There is a church in, in uh, Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. And so uh, like three times, three or four times, there's been this, there's been, they'll have on the news, oh, this n number five hurricane is coming and it's coming right on the shore of Wilmington. I'm like, uh -huh. it'll never come there. You know why it won't come there? Because I know the church there. They won't be having any hurricane there. Weather extremes, are, are y'all in that whatever they call the, the, some kind of belt or something for hurricanes? Tornadoes, tornadoes. Are tornadoes of God? So what are you going to do about tornadoes? We bind you, you foul spirit that brings extremes. In this area, there will be no tornadoes here, no hurricanes here. Remember, Jeannie Wilkerson said that, that great providence of God. She said, In the last days, you have to take authority over weather extremes. We don't just sit there and watch it coming. Oh my God, it's a hurricane. Get to the basement. Use your authority. And say, you get back. You get up in those clouds. Hallelujah. i just like us to stand right now. We're going to all march. I, I don't know. We're just going to march so that this kind of gets in your heart. Now, listen, listen to how you sound when you march. I want you to march like, I want you to march like, like, okay, come on. Notice that you're not saying, bah. <laughs> There's nobody in here going, bah. It, it, it doesn't fit in this mode. I'm telling you, devils, hear you coming. And they know who you are. 
And they know they move and they get out of the way. Because of you and because of Jesus, that's enough. You don't have to march me. <laughs> but I love that sound. Hallelujah. I love it. Praise the Lord. Now, so I want you to do this. I want you to start doing this in your services to remind the people on a regular basis. I want, when you come in the pulpit, I want you to be a pastor as you are. And we'll always have pastors and sheepfolds and those wonderful things. But I want you to become a commander. And I, you can see the switch over when, be, when he starts commanding and the people start working with that. Let's just be who we are. At least on Sundays and Wednesdays or whenever you have church. So that it gets down into the people. It gets down in your heart. And you are reminded. When you get in your car, you say, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. No one will hit me and I will hit no one in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over this car. Side to side, front to back, and top to bottom. This car will work according to manufacturer's specifications in the name of Jesus. And I go from here to my destination. Hey, you know what? It's, it's really not funny. It, it really isn't funny. It's really true. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Pastor, I want you to come up here now. You can come too, Sam. Because this is not something that... Um, this is not something that he, he can't, we're all equipped to do this. By what? A spiritually granted authority. Right? All right, so whatever the Lord tells you to command, command it right now in the name of Jesus. For this city, you know this city, you know what you're believing for, and we're going to all be in agreement with him. Sam, you pray with your dad, okay? Oh, oh, yeah, hold him. Yeah, you're like that, okay? He's a commander. No, go, Nate. We take authority over spirit of strife and division. In the name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus. And we command you to go. Yes. You, we, you lying, dividing yes. spirit. We take authority you over you in Jesus' name. Spirit. No more. In no more dividing Jesus. families. No more dividing no. churches. We no. rebuke you in Jesus' name. We rebuke name. you in the name of we Jesus. We take authority over finances. We thank you this place is blessed. blessed. More than enough. It can uh, only take be Take your blessed. hands off finances. It can take only your be hands blessed. off minds. I thank you for ideas. Thank, thank you, you, Lord. We we, we, we say, in the name of Jesus, creativity be in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you. Thank Take you, your, Lord. your hands off just of a clouded mind in the name of Jesus. Take thank your you. hands off our schools in the yes. name of Jesus. And Oppression name of and depression in the name of Jesus. Yes, you Lord. must go. Yes. Bow your knee in yes. Jesus' name. We thank take you, authority Lord. over our schools and our teachers. Yes. And, and, and we say, you will stand for what's in you. Yes. Oh, greater ones in you. Oh, yes, every, greater every, one. every, every. Everyone, everyone, every Christian rising up. Yes. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take authority over all darkness. Yes. Over every bit of, of darkness in the name of Jesus. We it take authority over you in the name of Jesus. We tell you, go. We take authority over you, you foul spirit of pornography. We yes. say, no. In the name of Jesus. We say, no. Yes. We take authority over you. We say, go now in Get Jesus' out. name. Get out. We take authority Get over out. you. Say, no. Now we've drawn a bloodline around marriages and around families. And we say, you will fulfill all that you've been called to do. Yes, what you, good Father, you join Lord. together. Thank, Thank you. Lord. We do not pull apart. Hallelujah. Say, Hallelujah. no weapon formed against us. No be. weapon. And we take authority over you, you subtle spirit of just enough we take authority over you yes we serve a God who's more than enough yes, in the name of we take authority over you that tries to keep dreams from and dreamers from dreaming we take authority over you in the name of Jesus greater let me remind you something greater is he that's in me greater. than anything that's in this He's world greater. and my eyes haven't seen it my ears haven't heard it but my father's revealing to me the things he has in store for me and I'm going to make known to you devil yes the wisdom of God and what you oh thank you father for this place it is you said it there's a what did you say you said a spiritual you said something a moment ago um, a spiritual 
He said, this place, there's something about this place. There's something about, there's something about Alma. There's something about this place. Yes. And um, there you'll is. You'll get like more a, and more. And I'm telling you something. You do this, just do this much, you'll get more and more. Because why? Because you are committed and you do it. The Holy Spirit will start looking to and fro throughout the earth. Thank you. you go, where are those people yes. that I know? They will do it. Yes. I promise you. Yes. It, it's amazing yes. what will happen here. Yes, yes, yes. It's amazing. And you know, we talk, we're talking, uh, we're going to be talking about this in the coming weeks, but you know the love, this is the love of God right here. This is the love of God. You take an authority over things in your neighborhood. You take an authority over d destruction coming to your neighborhood. You take an authority over lack for your friends and your family. You take an authority over the school so they're your, your friends' children, whether you like them or not. Yes. You want to start authority. Take it. This, is, this is the love of God. Amen. That there's no, no plague shall come near your dwelling place. And they said, I want that. I, I want that. And guess what? As long as I'm here, as long as we're not we going to be it, salt, it's not salty. To, you want it. Well, if you want it, do you it. have to do it. Come on. You have to do the word. This is called doing it, not just knowing it, sitting with your authority in your lap, but lift your voice to God and to the devil and enforce his yeah. defeat in this area. You know what you should do about these elections? You can say, okay, Mr. Devil, this is going one way. God's way only. Whatever God's way is, we're not looking for a party. We're not looking. We're looking for God's way for this nation. And so in this area right here, in this region, you will be taking authority over demon powers that try, would try to push their way in for the spirit of Antichrist to reign in your area. Amen? Armies. I love armies. Amen. Amen. Did you Hallelujah. know did you know this was in her? Hallelujah. It's in me all right. All right. And I, I'm gonna just do one more. Yeah, I'm gonna just do one more right here. I take authority over the spirit of murder in this state in the name of Jesus. Now I don't know why I'm doing that, but I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Devil, you foul spirit of murder that would try to come to this place. I take authority over you, and I render you an operative to work right now. Your plans, your purposes, they come to nothing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God, this is what we were created for. Hallelujah. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are soldiers. In the army of the Lord. You made that song, Susan? Susan. We are soldiers in the army. Soldiers in the army. Army. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers. I think we need to do the little march thing. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers. I wish I had a tambourine right now. Uh, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers in the army to the beat of God. We are soldiers, and this is the beat of God for the last days. We are soldiers in the army, and we are bold as a lion, harmless as a dove. In God's spirit, we will walk in His love and sing. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers in the army. Hallelujah! 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 Shout to the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You know, I go to Israel all the time, and one of the things about the armies of Israel, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, is when they win a battle, they go out shouting. And we can go out shouting today 
because we already won. Yeah. Hallelujah. So let's shout for the Lord right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all are just tremendous. I love you all very dearly. My, my husband told me this morning because of weather in Minneapolis that I am taking authority over. It's already moved some. It's supposed to be there about one. Now it's not coming to four. Not coming at four either. <laughs> but, but he said, now, when you get off, step off that pulpit today, I want you to get on your pony and ride. So I'm riding now, but I love you all. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Y'all, it's, it's awesome. Thank you, pastors, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank love y'all. Thank you. God Lord. bless Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Ann. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Man, oh, man, I just, I, see, and what, even what I shared for, you know, when the Lord brings instruction. <laughs> you want to talk about honor? You want to see God move in your life? You want to see things, the enemy be at bay? Honor what he says. And I believe that this was totally a teaching word. And then, you know the coolest thing about this? Every bit of what was taught, it's what we, we, we read or we're supposed to be reading all the time. It's in the Bible, every bit of it. This is our purpose. Our purpose is not looking forward to, well, Super Bowl is today, which that's great. We like Super Bowl, but... But our purpose is so much bigger than an event. Our purpose is so much bigger than a date on a calendar. Our purpose is a purpose that's eternal. Our purpose is people. And I'm telling you, when, when, when the law of God reigns, the Bible talks about people being free to do and God to have free course when the law of God. But when the law of the enemy is put, like she was talking about the spirit of anarchy. Can you imagine? You can't go to church. You can't do this. You can't do this. This is... Let me tell you, if that comes about, you know whose fault? It's ours. And we've been taught, and the Lord brought us direction. And I believe that the Lord bring, brought us direction because he desires this year to be a year of the great breaking loose. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every spirit that's holding or grabbing a hold of things, holding back our provision, holding back dreams, holding back visions. Father, we take authority over everything that's holding back unity within marriage, holding back families and children coming back to Jesus. We take authority over you in the name of Jesus, and we say, let go. You have no hold in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for stirring us up on the inside that we'd be more aware of who you are in us than we are in this world. That we'd be aware of you and us, Father. And we honor you and we say thank you, sir, for bringing us your word this morning. And we just tell you we're doers, not hearers only. We will do your word. We'll make it our own. And we will not be shamed a full in doing it, but we'll be bold. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. You know what? I want to just talk about this. You know, we, at the prayer conference this weekend, we talk about being spirit-led. Being spirit-led is not being goofy. It's not being weird. And, it, uh, you know, if you go start going on the corner and being all goofy and, ah, well, it better be the Lord. No, I'm being serious. But these things, these are things that he, he, the Lord will talk to you. He says, take authority as you're driving through the carpool lane. Take authority as you're getting in your car. Take authority as you're to get in a shower. Take authority while you're, it, it, take authority. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Take it. And don't be ashamed to respond to somebody that's God. God's ability in our life is only limited to our ability to see him as God. He, if God tells you to do it, if he says, walk off the stage. He's not saying that. But if he did, go for it. Amen. Amen. Hey, a couple of announcements before we go. Don't forget, um, if, if uh, Starting Point 101 is today over in the youth building, we'd love to see you over there. Um, other than that, if you also need prayer or agreement for anything, we'd love to see God work on your behalf. The Bible says if two agree touching anything, it'll be done for them. So we'd love to do that after church up here. You know, we're not in the fake Facebook uh, Oz, all-knowing God. Um, but other than that, uh, we're so ready. And next week, I want to come back next week. I, there's, a, there's something the Lord's laid on my heart. Um, it's just a standalone message, and it's called the spirit of victory. And, um, and you know what? God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I want to leave you just with this little piece, and we're going to talk about this more. What does it mean to be sound? When something is sound, it has no holes in it.
When something is sound, it doesn't need somebody to, 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 to prop it up so that it, ha- it can have joy that day. You know why? Because it's sound. Everything's already there. There's nothing missing. There's nothing lacking. You know what it doesn't need? It doesn't need to make sure that it sees something in the bank account in order to have joy. You know what it doesn't need? It doesn't need anything added to it. You know why? Because God has given us a sound mind. You know what else he's given us? He's given us not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. So he put it on the inside of and a spirit of love and these two things power and love and yet a sound mind and so often we don't tap into the spirit that's within us a spirit of power okay the greater one the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you and me and so many times we don't tap into the spirit of love loving our spouse and loving our children and loving our neighbor you know why because I'm hurting and they didn't say this to me because of this I would love them if this happened I would like them to this you know what I would feel more powerful if everything was going my way if everything was just click 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 clicking into, into place you know what no you got a sound mind and it's time for you to stop thinking because there's something missing I can't get it no you have nothing missing because God didn't give you something that's holy he gave you something that's whole all right we're not preaching anymore that's next week so come back one on one's neck over there and I'm telling you what there's a spirit of victory there is there's something and you know that's called the spirit of faith and this is the victory that overcomes the world it's even our faith it's understanding what God gave us saying yep and that's what I have And not being, well, the conditions. How many of you know we don't fix our eyes on that which is seen, but we fix our eyes that which is unseen because the things that are seen are are subject to change? Oh, all right. Love you. Uh, Prayer or uh, one-on-one next door. And, hey, happy Super Bowl. Go whoever. (laughs) Broncos. Cam Newton. I don't know. Patriots. Patriots. Oh, wait, they're not there. (laughs) 